right now and there is Facebook. All right, everybody. Well, Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. And if you're like me right now, you are stunned. I know the world is stunned right now because the reports are coming in that Kobe Bryant has just died and he died in a fiery helicopter crash um, maybe 45 minutes ago, maybe an hour ago. Uh, I, I'm, oh, I'm just speechless. I mean, I don't even know what to say. That's just, you know, I, I was thinking about that and I was like, you know, when, uh, you know, when you wake up and, you know, you don't know it's your last day on earth, you don't know it's the last time you're going to see your wife, you don't know it's the last time you're going to see your kids, you know. So, so, yeah, um, it's really, um, Hello? How are you? Did you ask to join in? M I M is up to M Russia. Oh, okay. Amen. Okay. All right. Well, let me get, um, uh, might be some other people coming on. Uh, but uh, I'm about to get into today's message, so I'm just going to go forward. How do you? Uh, how am I doing? I'm doing fine. I'm talking about Kobe Bryant. So, um, yeah, so, uh, uh, I'm sorry, English, no, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, all right, well, that's okay, just, thank you, bro, just, just listen in, then, if English is bad, I don't, I don't uh, speak Russian, I gotta speak English, but just listen in, then, uh, that's okay, no problem. Okay. Uh, but. so, so, uh, yeah, so, all this is coming in about Kobe, and, you know, I know that America is under judgment, and I know that the death horseman is in our land, okay? And so that means that, you know, when the death horseman is in your land, you know, unless you're covered by the blood, you don't know what can happen. You don't know who can get taken out. You don't know. You don't know. You got to be covered by the blood. You got to be covered by the blood and in the will of God, and you've got to make sure that you know the Lord for yourself in so many things because death can't just come upon you when you're walking in the will of God or when you're... And so I'm not, I'm not trying to cast any aspersions on Kobe. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm saying that one of the benefits of knowing the Lord is that, you know, death does not just come upon you, okay, when you're walking with Christ and when a death horseman is in the land... Like this is just no telling what's going on. So I'm stunned. So don't misunderstand any of what I just said. I'm not casting aspersions on Kobe at all. I'm talking about one of the benefits you have as a Christian when you're walking in obedience to the will of God is that, you know, that your you know, death is not just gonna come upon you. Your life doesn't just get taken away from you uh like that. But just like everything else with the Lord, those promises are not automatic. That's why you hear me talk so much about genie concept, because I have discovered by living that people don't understand how God's kingdom and how God's promises work. They think that God's promises are automatic, and that's not true. Everything that God does is by covenant, which means you have to be in a covenantal relationship with God to claim his promises. You have to be saved. You have to be born again. You have to be justified positionally right with God, but that's your position. But then there's also your condition and your condition has to do with the way you live your life, which is going to feed right into the prophetic word for today. But your condition as a Christian is the way you live your life. If you want an example of somebody that was in the will of God and then got out and then it cost them their life, they died early. In the Bible, that would be Samson. Samson was called by God to be a judge, to judge Israel and to judge the Philistines. And Samson had an exceptional anointing. And when you come on to the broadcast, please like and share. Because whenever a prophetic word is going forth, we want as many people as possible to hear it. So Samson had a, pro a prophetic anointing to judge. And Samson had a unique anointing. He had super strength. So he was able to kill dozens of men by himself when the Holy Ghost would come upon him. Okay? 
But Samson started living a carnal life, and then he ended up cutting his, his hair, which was a sign of the covenant he had with God. And then he got so far out of the will of God that the anointing lifted off him. So he thought he could just stand up and shake himself like before, and his strength would come back. But his supernatural strength was gone, and the Philistines captured him. And then they blinded him and put his eyes out, and a whole bunch of stuff, bad stuff happened. And so that's an example in the Bible of somebody who started out in the will of God with the anointing, with doing what God wanted them to, them to do, and then got so disobedient, got so far out of the will of God, till they didn't even know when the anointing lifted off, and then they ended up dying early. See what I mean? So one of the benefits you have as a Christian is that death cannot just come upon you and take you out like that. But you have to be born again. You've got to be saved. You've got to be justified with God. That's your position. And then you have to be living in obedience. That's your condition. See what I mean? Because when you're living in disobedience, if you want another example, in the New Testament, that would be Ananias and Sapphira. They made a pledge to the church when Apostle Peter was running the church that they were going to give a certain amount of money. But then they went and sold some property. They lied about how much they sold the property for because maybe they changed their mind about their pledge. They came and saw Peter separately, and they both told the same lie. And Peter said that judgment was going to fall on them like that because they lied to the Holy Ghost. Because you don't make a pledge like that to God and then renege. They lied to the Holy Ghost, and Ananias and Sapphira in the New Testament dropped dead. First he came in, told that lie, dropped dead. They moved his body out. Then his wife came in later. And Peter said, did you sell it for this much? She told the same lie. And Peter was like, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? She dropped dead. That's New Testament. <clears throat> so I'll say it again. One of the advantages you have as a believer in Christ is that death cannot just come upon you. Death cannot just walk up to you and take you out. But <laughs> you have to be saved. You got to be a Christian. You got to be right with God through Jesus Christ position, and then you have to be living the way that God wants you to live. Sorry, just got to be living the way God wants you to live. That's your condition, okay? That's how you walk in such a way to where you can live your full lifespan when you are in obedience, okay? So like I said, I'm stunned by this news about Kobe. This happened less than an hour ago. I was just getting home from church, and I was seeing this popping up on everything. And I, at first I thought it was a hoax. I was like, is this some kind of joke or whatever? And and then I put it out there and then everybody was telling me that it's real. And I, you know, I, yeah, what can you say? So I'm saying, so it, it kind of feeds into what the Holy Ghost gave me to say today. Today's prophetic phrase, prophetic word is redeem the time. Again, today's prophetic word is redeem the time. Now, some of you have heard that phrase a lot. Some of you, you might be new to it, but I'm going to explain from the scripture what that means, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's dive in with a word of prayer. Thank you, God, for today. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy, oh God. Thank you for your hand of grace that is always open to us, your children. I should fill me with the Holy Ghost, oh God. Fill my mouth, my, my tongue, my hands, everything, Lord. Fill me with the Holy Ghost and speak through me that I might release the prophetic words you have called upon me to release to the body of Christ, to your honor and your glory. We thank you for it and we believe you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, today's prophetic word again is redeem the time. You may or may not be familiar with the scriptures, so I'm going to read them to you right now. Let's start out with the King James. Uh, if you know the scripture, that is most likely the version you are most familiar with. I'm reading Ephesians chapter 5, verses 14 through 17. Ephesians is one of the Pauline epistles. It's one of the letters that the Apostle Paul wrote. I believe he was in jail when he wrote this one. He wrote this to the church at Ephesus. That's why it's called Ephesians. It was at a church in a city named Ephesus. Okay? Ephesians chapter 5, verses 14 through 17, from the King James Version. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Okay? 
Now let me read you that in the NIV. Ephesians 5, 14-17, in the NIV version. This is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. I also got a prophetic word this morning in church about this very thing. Because remember, you hear me say it all the time, there's only one Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not saying no 29 different things. Okay? So, um, let me rest well, I'll release that prophetic word, um, and then we'll exegete the scripture. Here's a prophetic word the Lord gave me this morning. <clears throat> For behold, my people, uh, I have indeed brought you into your 2020 season. I want you to be very careful and pay attention to how you're spending your time, and your days. For every moment that you spend out of my perfect will, you are wasting your time. I do not want you to be as the people in Matthew 7, 23, that have spent a lifetime doing a bunch of religious works, but were not intimate with me. Rather, I want you to press in and seek my face. And I want you to press in on Romans 12 and 2, that you might prove what is my good, acceptable, and perfect will for you. And as you seek me every day, and as you do with your time every day what I want you to do, your fruitfulness will increase tenfold to the honor and glory of God the Father, says the precious Holy Spirit of the living God. That's the prophetic word the Lord gave me this morning, and it dovetails with all of this. <clears throat> so going back to the scripture, it says, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. That literally means you are sleepwalking through life if you don't know the Lord. If you're not walking in the light of Christ, if you don't have a personal relationship with Christ, you are walking in darkness. You sleepwalking your way through life. You sleep and don't know it. You blind and don't know it. You don't know what's around the corner. You don't know that you don't know because you can't see. <clears throat> That's what that means. <clears throat> that we need to wake up so the Lord can shine his light on us, open, on us and open our eyes and cause us to see. Then it says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. That is verse 15. I'll read it again. Uh, Pay careful attention then to how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. That's Berean Study Bible. So it says, pay careful attention. And in the Greek, that means carefully, exactly, strictly, distinctly. That lines up with the prophetic word that the Lord gave me that you're supposed to pay attention to how you spend your time. How are you spending your time every day? What are you doing every day? Do you seek the face of God at the top of your day and ask the Lord what his will is for your life today? Are you at that level with Christ? Because Christ wants you to be at that level. Christ wants you to get up in the morning and the first thing you do after obviously going to the bathroom, washing your face off, is spend time with him. And part of what you're supposed to do when you spend time with the Lord is get uh, before him and ask him, what do you want me to do today? Am I in your perfect will? Am I living the way you want me to live? Am I doing what you want me to do? So it says, be careful attention then to how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Who are the unwise? People that do not have a relationship with Christ. People that do not seek his face. People that do not surrender their day to him by honoring God at the top of your day and asking him to, to guide you into his perfect will. Because remember, there are levels of, of the will of God. Jesus lived the perfect will of God every day of his life, every thought, every word, every choice, every moment, because the Lord had no sin. The rest of us, we have to learn how to get in the perfect will of God and have to learn how to walk that out every day. Okay? And you say, Prophet Taylor, how do we do that? You do that the same way you do anything in the kingdom of God. You have to seek his face and you have to seek his word. You have to have that personal relationship where you are talking to God every day about your life. All the details of your life are what you're supposed to be talking to God about when you start your day, your relationships, your physical health, your money, your children, your career, your education. You name it. When you start off on your day, you're supposed to be talking to the Lord about everything that's in your life. Then you have to seek his word. What does the scripture say <clears throat> about your situations? That's why we have the Bible, so we can know God's thoughts. And that's how you begin to press your way into the perfect will of God. 
You stack your life up against the word of God. What does the Bible say versus how am I living? You stack your life up against any rhema word or prophetic word that God gives you. If the Lord gives you a prophetic word like the one I just released, then ask yourself, how does my life look in comparison to that? And you begin to press your way in to the perfect will of God. It's just like anything else. You've got to press your way into it. It doesn't happen automatically. Okay? And so, <clears throat> verse 16. It says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. In English, that word redeem means to buy back. Uh, in Greek, it means to buy up, ransom. It also means to rescue from loss. So if it means we're supposed to rescue from loss the time, what that means is that we're not supposed to waste our lives on earth. It's so funny because my pastor just preached this very thing this morning. We're not supposed to waste our lives on earth. We were given time to live on earth to do what God created us to do, not what we wanted to do. And if we're doing what we want to do outside of the perfect will of God, we are wasting our time. And the Bible says that's not wise. So we're supposed to buy back the time. So that means every day you live, you're supposed to be doing with that day what God wants you to do. That's how you redeem the time. Okay? Otherwise, it's lost time. And then it says, because the days are evil. Okay? So that word evil there, it means evil, bad, wicked, malicious, or slothful. So that means there's evil in the world, there's bad things, there's wicked things. Maliciousness is when somebody means to do you harm. And slowfulness is laziness, moving slow, not being industrious, not working hard. So the Bible is telling us that all that kind of stuff is in the world. And as Christians, we are not supposed to be living that way. We're not supposed to be living in that. Okay? Then we're going to move on to verse 17, Ephesians 5 and 17. And it says... Therefore, do not be foolish. There it is again, that word foolish. Therefore, do not be foolish or unwise. Um, now, out of the Greek, that word means senseless, foolish, inconsiderate, mindless, stupid, ignorant, egotistic, rash, or unbelieving. That's why I believe that the Lord wrote the Bible in Hebrew and Greek, because Hebrew and Greek is so much more expressive in terms of what the different words mean. We see one word in English, and it can have one meaning, but the actual word in Hebrew and Greek has broad meanings. And again, that word uh, aphrones in your Strong's is uh, number 878. In the Greek, it means senseless, foolish, inconsiderate, mindless, stupid, ignorant, egotistic, rash, or unbelieving. That's what it means when we see the English word foolish. So in other words, God is saying, if you're living your life senselessly without any kind of direction, you're not considering how you're living. He's saying that's a mindless, stupid, ignorant way if you're living egotistically, meaning living like you think you're the, the center of everything, that life revolves around you, that you're not going to die one day, that you don't have to answer for the way that you live. That's just ego. That's just saying you, you saying, thinking that life doesn't apply to you. Then it says being rash or unbelieving. Being rash means being hasty in your decisions and not think about what you're doing. Just kind of popping off and doing stuff. And then it says unbelieving. That specifically is talking about you not HBO, you not believing what God says. God says all of that is foolish. God said if you live in like any of that, that is foolish. God said that is not the way to spend your life on earth, thinking that you're the sinner, just jumping up and making decisions without thinking about it, not believing what God has to say, walking around mindlessly, stupidly, ignorant. What does ignorant mean? Ignorant means not knowing stuff. Ignorant means having no knowledge of anything. If you're completely ignorant, God said that is foolish. That is not the way to live. Okay? But then he says, but understand. But understand. Now let's look in the Greek. That word means, that word in English that says understand. And the Greek says to consider, understand, perceive, to put together, to comprehend by implication, to act piously. So you know what that means? It means that you're supposed to spend some time thinking about the will of God, spend some time with the Lord, and make a plan, map out what you're doing. Figure out what it is that God wants you to do, and then make some kind of carefully thought out plan. So you're like, you know, this month I'm focusing on this, this week I'm doing this, this quarter I'm doing this, this year is going to be about this, and the next year 
will, you know, seek the Lord again and that kind of thing. Okay? And it also means to put together, that's the plan part, but it means to comprehend. And what that means is that you're not supposed to be just out here guessing what God wants you to do. You're not supposed to be out here just kind of randomly doing what God wants you to do. You're supposed to know from season to season what it is God wants, God wants me to focus on in this season. Okay, so it says, understand what the Lord's will is, what the Lord's will is, okay? Uh, that word will, an act of will, wishes, desires, uh, a determination, a choice, or inclination. So in other words, what is Jesus' desire for you? What is it that Jesus wants you to walk in? Uh, what are, are the Lord's choices for you? What are his inclinations? In other words, what is it that he's trying to get you in? Because I know, for example... I know of a surety that God, the Holy Spirit, pointed me towards the prophetic. I remember when he did it. And I remember I was asking the Lord some questions, and I remember the Spirit of God uh, showed me vision and anointed me on the inside and pointed me directly at the prophetic because that is what I do. That's where I belong. That's the part of the body of Christ that I am. So I know that when I'm walking in the prophetic anointing, I'm doing what the Lord created me to do. He did not point me towards the evangelical. Although I do know how to evangelize, I do know how to lead, lead souls to Christ. He did not point me towards the evangelical. He did not point me towards the pastoral. He pointed me towards the prophetic. The Spirit of God anointed me and showed me very clearly, this is where I want you to be. That's what I mean in my own life. So that means if God did it for me, he'll do it for you. He'll do, he'll did it. He'll do it for you because he's no respecter of persons. That means if he made it clear to me where he wanted me, he'll make it clear to you where he wants you because he's no respecter of person. Okay? So to sum up today, because again, I'm still stunned about this Kobe thing. I'm still, I'm just stunned. To sum up today, the Lord is saying that we're supposed to wake up and let his light shine on us. And we're supposed to ponder and consider and think every day, how am I spending my life? We're supposed to get up in the morning, and the first thing we do is seek the face of Jesus. Seek him through your personal prayer time, prayer, and fellowship with him, and then seek him through your personal study time, studying the word of God, so you can know God's commandments and thoughts. And then you stack your life against what the Lord said to you through the rainbow word, what the Lord might have said to you in your personal time, and what the scriptures say, and ask yourself, am I living that? What the Bible says is that's the way I'm living. Am I doing that? And if you're not doing that, the Lord said both through the prophetic and through the scripture that you're being foolish and that you are wasting your time. You are wasting your time if you are not in the perfect will of God. Then it says, be very careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. So we, we looked in the Greek and we found out what it means to be unwise. All the ways you are unwise. And we also looked up that word foolish and all the ways you can be foolish. That's why I love getting behind the language in the Bible so you can see uh, everything that the Lord is talking about when the Holy Spirit chooses those words. And he says, because the days are evil, that means there's evil and wickedness and badness and maliciousness all around you. That means don't walk in that. Walk in what God wants you to walk in. And it says, don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. So in other words, we're not animals. We're not, you know, mindless drones. You can know for yourself what it is that God wants you to do, but you have to seek it out. That's the thing. It's not automatic. That's why you hear me talk about all the time why I work so hard to break off the spirit of genie concept because too many people have believed for too long that God's will just automatic, automatically happens. And no, it doesn't. You've got to seek it out. You've got to seek his face. You've got to seek his word. You've got to stay in prayer. And you've got to let him show you what he wants you to do each day, week, month, uh, season of your life. All right? So if I have any prayer requests or any questions about what I'm teaching, put it on the screen now. When you see me close my eyes and speak in tongues, I'm asking the Lord, is there any, any additional prophetic words, healing, deliverance, or financial words? Okay? If you got a prayer request or any questions, put them on the screen right now. All right, 
not seeing anything, so that means we're clear. Amen and amen. So, in conclusion, I'm stunned like the rest of the world that Kobe, Kobe Bryant is just gone. He didn't grow old and die. Uh, of course, they try to call on doing the broadcast. Kobe Bryant did not grow old and die. He woke up today, and today was his last day on earth, the last day he'd see his wife, and the last day he'd see his kids. It just happened about an hour ago. So I see now why the Holy Spirit, and, I, and I, again, I'm not, I'm not casting aspersions on Kobe, so don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm using that as an example because it's the most prominent example that we have right now in the moment about how you don't know what a day will bring forth. And so the word of the Lord that came to me today, both prophetically and through the scripture, is that we are supposed to redeem the time. We are supposed to be sure every day that we seek the face of Jesus and be sure that we are asking the Lord, what are we supposed to be doing with our lives? What am I specifically supposed to be doing today? Okay? So I just want to encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, if you are listening to this broadcast even if you're not listening to me live, if you are watching the replay and you are not saved, I admonish you, I encourage you, I urge you to become born again and to get right with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And the way you get saved is A, B, C. A, admit you're a sinner. B, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for your sins and rose on the third day. C, confess all that with your mouth as you're believing it in your heart. That is how you get born again. That's how you get saved. It's just as simple as that, ABC, because Jesus already did all the work on the cross. You have to admit you're a sinner, believe in Christ, and confess it with your mouth. That's how you get saved. That's your position with God. If you are a Christian, you are already saved. Then I urge you to get your condition with God right. And your condition with God is how you live your daily life. Are you doing with your life what the Lord saved you and created you to do? Because if you're not, you're wasting your time. And the Bible says, as you see in the lesson, that is foolish. That is unwise. And that means we're not supposed to do it. Because you don't know when your last day on earth is. You do not know. Okay? All right. So amen and amen. I'm... I'm I'm glad to be used by God, but I'm sobered by this news because it's just so all of a sudden. So anyway, uh, so like I told you, I've got good things coming up uh, this year. Uh, those of you who haven't seen it already, my prophetic devotional is now available. This is available on my website, prophetdavidtaylor.org. I also put the link uh, in my, uh, uh, put the link on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, Okay. So you can develop that personal prophetic walk with God using my journal because the pages therein, uh, there's a different scripture every day, and then you write down what the Lord tells you. Okay, that's the page for January, or February, excuse me. Then you write down what the Lord tells you in this section, and then later on you come back on the bottom section and write down the victory you got from obeying what the Lord told you. One prophetic scripture, it's talking about a prophet or a prophecy, or a prophetic experience in the Bible, three different translations. Okay, so I strongly encourage you to get my daily prophetic devotional if you want to strengthen your walk with God on a daily basis in the prophetic. And it's uh, only $9.99, um, and you can uh, order it, and they'll ship it directly to you. Okay? Uh, also, I'm selling some personally at my church, but for those of you that are watching me anywhere in the world, you can buy this online and get it shipped to you. Okay? I'm also coming out with more of my music. Um, uh, uh, a lot of people that have known me for a while asked me what happened to my music. It didn't go anywhere. I've been working on it. And those that are just kind of have just met me recently probably didn't know that I'm a musician because I've been a musician. I've been in music since I was a child, you know. So that's coming back this year, too. So I'm just super excited about 2020. And like you hear me say it every week. I'm living what I'm telling you. I'm not up here preaching anything that I'm not doing because I know people have problems with spiritual leaders that say one thing and then live something else. I'm doing what I'm telling you. That's why I say it here every week. So, you know, I'm not just running my mouth. So, uh, and I'm seeking God every day and I want to give birth to everything God has put inside of me to give birth to. So my music is coming back to the forefront 
uh, this year. I have all kinds of music. I have hymns. I have EDM, Christian music. Yeah, I know that sounds like an oxymoron. I have funk, gospel, F-U-N-K, funk, gospel. I know that sounds like an oxymoron. I have contemporary Christian. I have praise and worship songs. I have a lot of stuff. I even have uh, exercise tracks. I was told by some Christian moms a while back that they want to exercise to music at home, but they don't want to use secular music because they don't agree with the language and the lyrics, and they don't want to expose it to their kids. So I've got some tracks you can exercise to that are talking about the Lord, or you can get your sweat on. So I got all that. So all that is coming uh, this year. So I want you to stay tuned because I'm going to be introducing it on this channel and letting you know when certain music is available. Okay? And also, uh, Mazel is there if you want to sew into my ministry. Mazel is prophetdavidtaylor at gmail.com if you feel so inclined to uh, sow an offering into my ministry because I'm doing more and more each year, so that money is going to good use in terms of my ministry opportunities, uh, sending me places, helping me minister locally, helping me uh, uh, set up my Meet in My House project. There's a lot going on, okay? I'm going to set up my music separately. I'm going to set up my music through a Patreon because uh, um, so the music can be separate for the, from the not-for-profit. So that's going to be a separate thing, but I'm going to introduce all the new stuff on this channel, okay? All right, thank you so much. God bless you, and amen. Thank you for tuning in live. God bless you if you're watching on the replay, and God bless you if you're listening to the podcast, okay? So uh, I just want to thank you all. I really appreciate it. Today is Sunday, January 26, 2020, if you want a date stamp. Uh, and thank you so much for that. So I will see you next Sunday, Lord willing. Now, I know next Sunday is Soup Bowl Sunday. I know that. And the game doesn't start until late in the day. I'm so happy about that. Uh, but anyway, I will be on next Sunday for Super Bowl Sunday unless the Lord tells me not to. If the Lord tells me no prophetic word today, then I won't be on because I have to ask the Holy Ghost each week, what does he want me to do? Now, for those Sundays where I'm not on ministering, I will always post something. So I'll post something on my Twitter or my Facebook so you know no prophetic word today for whatever reason. Okay? Otherwise, I'll be here at my regular time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Okay? Thank you so much. God bless you. I strongly encourage you to redeem the time and get in the perfect will of God, for the days are evil and we don't want to be unwise or foolish. Amen and amen, and God bless.